Hey there and welcome back as we continue our tour of the Seven Wonders of the New World. So far we've looked at Chichen Itza and Rapa Nui. This week we're going to head to North America to the beautiful state of Colorado. In southwestern Colorado sits Mesa Verde National Park. It contains the most well-preserved cliff dwellings that North America has to offer. During the video I'm going to be using these two pieces of art. They aren't from the ancestral Pueblo, they're actually from the Hopi and the Zuni tribes. I wanted to make sure that that was clear because the ancestral Pueblo really didn't leave behind much in the way of representations of themselves. Mesa Verde is made up of over 4,000 archaeological sites that we know of. The cliff dwellings were constructed by the ancestral Pueblo, and they constructed their homes into the side of the aside. mesas. The ancestral Pueblo <clears throat> originally settled the area known as the Four Corners in the United States. This is the area where Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico all meet together. The ancestral Pueblo became what is known as the modern Pueblo tribes of the Hopi, the Zuni, the Acoma, and the Laguna. The ancestral Pueblo were farmers while their neighbors were all nomadic. The prehistory of the ancestral Pueblo can be broken up into six main stages. The first stage is Late Basket Maker 2, and this is from 100 to 500 CE. Then there's Basket Maker 3, which is from 500 to 750 CE. Then it transitions into Pueblo 1, from around 750 to 950 CE. Pueblo 2, from around 950 to 1150. Then Pueblo 3, from 1150 to 1300 CE. And finally, Pueblo 4, from 1300 to 1600. During the creatively named Basket Maker 2, it was called this because of the fine basketry they left behind, is where we start to find some of the first types of buildings that Will recognize in the cliff dwellings. They started to create ground storage pits to store food. However, during this time, they mainly did hunting and gathering, but they did start to dabble a little bit in maize cultivation. During the Basket Maker 3 period, we start to see an increase in farming, and this also leads to an increase in their population. To help support the new population and the increased farming, they started to create irrigation systems. They created reservoirs and dams to take and help with the farming. They also started to use low stone walls to reroute the water to moisturize the soil for farming. They started to take and cultivate bean at this time, and they even domesticated turkeys. But even though they had these two things, they still continued to hunt and gather. The Pueblo 1 time period is characterized by a move from caves and pit houses to above ground living. They created these structures that had 100 rooms or more called great houses. They also started to construct what are called kiva. Kiva were underground ceremonial and social structures that were adorned with colorful paintings. During this time period, they also started to farm cotton. The reason they were no longer called basket makers at this time was the baskets they were producing started to disappear, so we changed the culture's name. Their population started to expand so much during this time period that they started to expand out across the region. The Pueblo Pueblo 2 time period seen much of the same growth that the Pueblo 1 period seen. They continued to build great houses and kivas, but the kivas became more varied. Some of them started to be constructed in more of a tower fashion underground. During the Pueblo 3 time period, we actually start to see them constructing the first cliff dwellings. They started to construct their new homes into the recesses of the cliff walls. The structures they built for their houses weren't actually much different from modern apartments. They were made up anywhere from 2 to 4 levels, had anywhere from 20 to 1,000 rooms, and were constructed in a stair-step fashion. And you probably noticed that that's not quite like modern apartments, and there was a very specific reason for this. Because unlike modern apartments where they try to cram as many of us into a single area as they can so they can maximize their profits, the way they constructed their homes in the stair-stepped fashion, the house underneath you's roof acted as a terrace for your apartment. And it's during this time period that it's considered they hit their finest level of craftsmanship with their weaving and pottery. Let's talk about Mesa Verde now. The site is made up of over 600 cliff dwellings that are made out of sandstone and mud mortar. The most famous sites being the Cliff Palace, the Balcony House, and the Square Tower House. Although I would love to cover all three of these sites because each one shows shows us how the ancestral Pueblo worked and lived with the world around them. For the sake of time, I'm going to have to choose only just one of them. I've decided to choose the Cliff Palace for two reasons. One, it has a pretty cool name. Second, it's pretty indicative of the other structures that we'll see around Mesa Verde. The Cliff Palace is made up of 150 rooms and 23 kivas, and is thought to have been home to around 100 people. It's believed that the palace would have actually held an important place for the ancestral Pueblo, and they may have used it as a social or an administrative area, but it was also possibly used for high ceremonial activities. The palace was made out of sandstone, mortar, and wooden beams. The sandstone was carved by hand using other stones to shape it and size it to what they needed. The mortar was created of local soil, water, and ash. But the stone and mortar weren't laid like we would see a mason do today. They would set the stones how they wanted them, and then they would cram the mortar into any grooves and holes that they seen. They then plastered over the stone using earthen plasters of many different colors, from pink, red, yellow, white, and brown. Unfortunately, these were the first things to erode due to time. The Cliff Palace was abandoned sometime around the 13th century, and all the way up till the 1880s, it just sat eroding away. This was in part due to Mother Nature nature. Because of these outside factors, it was no longer as domineering as it once was, even though it's still impressive to look at today. Unfortunately, when the Cliff Palace was stumbled upon in the late 1800s, it would undergo further decay at our own hands this time. People started to exploit the Cliff Palace for commercial means. They did whatever they could to get the artifacts from the palace, even going as far as using dynamite to take and exploit it for everything it had. Sadly, this commercialization and large-scale destruction of sites, all in the name of money, 
isn't anything new. We need to look no further than any place that has suffered colonization. Luckily, there's been large-scale efforts in recent decades to help prevent this. However, you'll still hear about people destroying sites, either in the name of money or just because they can. So much of our history has been lost in the name of progress, and that is history that we as a collective will never be able to get back. It's not exactly certain why the ancestral Pueblo abandoned the sites around the 13th century, but there's a couple theories. Either it was due to cultural issues or changing environment. We do know of a great drought that occurred between 1276 and 1299, and this may have led to crop failures, forcing the population to have to disperse and go back to the tried and true method of hunting and gathering. Before I wrap the video up, I wanted to talk to you guys about something. In the coming weeks and months, the videos are probably going to go to bi-weekly, and this is due to a life-changing event. Megan has been pregnant now for the last nine months and is due to pop any day now. So I'm going to take and try to change what I'm doing here to match with my new lifestyle. I hope you guys understand and I appreciate your understanding. I want to thank you all for watching and I want to thank the patrons. If you guys want to take and help support the channel, help it grow, get extra content, then consider heading over to Patreon and becoming part of the Patreon crew.